Welcome back everyone! In the last video, I focused on making the world look significantly better, as well as adding the ability to punch trees and collect the resources. I also got the chance to include some of your guys' suggestions, which I really like doing. I want you guys to be as big a part of this development as I am, so I think I want to have a dedicated part of each video where I use your comments. Plus you guys are way smarter than me, so win-win. Luckily you guys had a lot of suggestions again, so I could keep doing it. So right off the bat, you guys pointed out that waiting an arbitrary 2 seconds to spawn things in is just a band-aid fix and won't work all the time. It works for me because I got a pretty solid mid-tier computer, but for all you guys running on those S-tier toasters, I'm afraid it won't. So that was a good catch. To fix this, I just made a slightly better band-aid. Instead of waiting two seconds, I just make a check if the mesh was there, and if not, it waits a short amount of time and tries again until it's successful. I got a few comments saying I should just use the noise map to place them at the set height, which is a really good idea, I just didn't get to it. Okay, next suggestion. You guys really hated the inventory. Now I did say I wasn't trying to make it look too much better, but lucky for you, I had to fix the whole thing anyway, so I touched it up a bit while I was at it. I got some UI elements from one of the asset packs I got with the Ukraine bundle, and I threw together a little inventory that I think looks much better. Better. I also learned a neat trick in the process. If you put all your item boxes into a grid layout group, you can space them out exactly how you want super easily. I also decided to keep the inventory smaller because I want players to have more of an incentive to stick around your base. And don't worry, I'll replace the icons with real ones later, but this is a good placeholder for now. For now I just want to focus on the backend stuff. So the inventory I set up in the last episode uses a list to hold everything. This did work, but it wasn't right for the game I want to make. For anyone who isn't familiar with lists, neither am I. That's why I wanted to use an array. But from my understanding, think of a list like, well a list. A list will only ever be as big as the number of items in it. You can add or take things off the list, but you normally don't move things around. Since an inventory is always a set size, you want to be able to place things anywhere inside the inventory. A list would not be the best option for this. An array on the other hand would be. You can think of an array as a classroom with a bunch of open seats. There's always a set amount of places to be, and you can sit wherever you want. So if I want to put something in the middle of the inventory, I just have to index to the middle of the array. So now that I had a plan, I spent one of my nights after work converting all the code to work with an array instead of a list. And after I did all that, it looks exactly the same. Just to make it look like I actually did something, I decided to add a max carry size for each item that will display in the inventory. This will help me balance the game later on, but in the meantime, now that the inventory can actually work, I implemented the ability to scroll through your items. This took a bit because I ran into a few problems involving animations. Surprise, surprise. The big one was that you can swap items mid-animation. To fix this, I had to fix my animation web, which was actually a good thing. I realized I could remove a bit and make it look much cleaner. I then could check if the player was in the idle state, and if they are, you can swap weapons. A few of you commented about making the animation web better, and I know I need to do this, and I will eventually, but for now this is working. Anyways, now that you can scroll through these items, you should probably be able to see them, so I threw together a smaller version of the inventory and have it linked to the same array of items. I then threw a highlighted box in that lines up with the correct index. I also made it so pressing the number pad will change to the item corresponding with that number. For some reason, Unity didn't want to make the number presses work easy in their shiny new input system, so I got stuck for a bit. I finally found that using a scale for each number will give the correct result. I I think there should be a better way to do this, but who am I to say? Anyways, now your inventory is finally useful. Well, almost. I still had to make it possible to move things around since I pushed that off last time. I don't want to show the code to this because YouTube has policies against showing things that are that disgusting. I definitely didn't do this in the best way, but that's a future fill problem. But I'll still give you a quick summary of what it does. So basically, when you click, it checks which inventory slot you are over and then uses that to decide the index in which you use to find the correct item in the array. It then creates a temporary identical item while it deletes the one from the current spot. Then when you release it, it checks all sorts of things so that it works like you would expect. So you can move things, swap their places, or stack things. Then I spent way too long trying to get the icon to drag with you. Again, this made the code even uglier, so just believe me when I say it works. I then spent a few minutes trying to program dropping the item. This wasn't too bad since I already had the item stored, so all I had to do was create a game object and drop it. So now when you drag an item outside the inventory and drop it, it appears in the real world just as planned. But now that I can drop items, I thought it would be cool if the trees also dropped items instead of just laying them on the ground. I did this by making it spawn an object that will then go on to spawn all the wood pieces. As you can see as of now, the items get picked up as soon as you walk near them. This is one option, but it leads to your inventory being cluttered with junk, and with such a small inventory, I don't know if that's the best. The other option is to make it so you have the choice of what to pick up or not, but this can get annoying to do with every item, so I'm a little torn. I then remembered I'm lucky enough to be able to ask you guys for some feedback when I'm stuck on something, so I put out a poll, and we waited. In the meantime, I also wanted to add some juice to the trees. No, not that kind. The kind that makes it so it feels fun to hit things. No, also not that kind. So I started with adding a shake effect when you hit it, and after a few failed attempts, I got it onto a passable state. Is it a bit aggressive? Yes. But can you tell I'm hitting it? Also yes. 
I do make it less aggressive later, so don't worry about that. You might notice the trees also take more than one hit now. I know some of you guys were worried I was going to leave one punch in the game, and who knows, maybe it'll be an unlockable character. But looking back at the tree, you can still clearly see I need to add more juice to it. In the meantime, I upgraded the animations a bit. I made the punch swing more in front of you, and you uses both hands if you hold it down. I also made the hitboxes much bigger for all the attack animations, as well as sped them up because speed is cool. Alright, the poll has been up for a while now, and the results were more split than I wanted them to be. A few of you had a great idea though, why not both? So I worked on making a nice blend between the two. Since the inventory is limited, choosing what to pick up is important, so that's what I started with. I implemented this by using more laser pointers, but this time originating at the middle of the screen. To make it easier to use, I put a small dot to show where you are looking at, and when you hover over an item within range, it turns yellow and displays the key to press, as well as what item you're going to pick up. It even shows the amount that's in the stack, and once you hit E, it's added into your inventory. Also, just as some polish, I decided to make the player walk through items that were on the ground. It felt weird walking on top of them, so this was just a preference. I then made it so that if an item is already in your inventory, it will automatically get picked up when you walk over it. This makes it so you don't have to spam E on everything, but you still get a choice of what's in your inventory. The process of adding things to your inventory actually made me go insane. I completely understand why so many games have item duplication glitches or other inventory related bugs. Normally, adding things is easy, but there are so many different scenarios you have to take into account. What if the item needs to be spread across multiple inventory spaces? What if you can only hold part of the item? Just so many different things to think about. I believe I got them all, but I'm also sure I missed something. Trying to catch all the edge cases was actually the most time consuming part of this devlog. Okay, okay, I'm done ranting. Now we can finally get into the new features. And since we spent so much time on the inventory, why not use it for some crafting? This basically just came down to using more loops to check through the array. Now you can click on the item you want to craft, and it will display the resources needed to craft it. It also shows you the amount of each of those resources you already have in your inventory, and if you don't have enough, it turns red. I know this menu is ugly right now, but as a wise man once said, make work now, make pretty later. Now that it checks if you can craft something, it would be good if you actually could do it. So I added a button that is active when you have all the resources required. It then cycles through the inventory, removing all the resources needed, and once it's finished, it adds the new item to your inventory. And boom, crafting done. So now I'll work on making it look nice. Wait, what's that in the distance? Oops, guess I ran out of time. This episode was basically Phil uses too many for loops, but we got a lot of systems set up. Since I have some good foundation laid, I'm really excited for the next time. I plan on doing something way more fun, farming. I'm getting close to the point where I can start really giving this game some personality. If you're excited to see where this goes, make sure to like, subscribe, and join the Discord. See you next time.